Hi, I'm Keith Baker. I'm the original creator of Eberron. I've been designing games for over 15 years and I'm really excited uh, to have Rising from the Last War coming out now. Throughout the book, we add in these little sidebars that are newspaper clippings from the setting as if these are, are things that you'd read because Eberron has newspapers, it has the Korenberg Chronicle, the Sharn Inquisitive. So as you're flipping through the book, you'll see these little, little excerpts from stories. These just have lots of little tiny insights and, and a lot of them are pretty entertaining of just what do people see from the, the world itself. I think my personal favorite of, of the ones I wrote is there's a section dealing with the blood of Vol that is discussing the high priest Malevenor, who's a mummy, and how he doesn't like the Emerald Claw. Title for that is Corpse Cleric Condemns Claw. Eberron was something that capturing that whole sort of sense of pulp adventure while also having the sort of intrigue and sort of shades of gray you get from film noir and also just taking the principle to me that a magic in Dungeons and Dragons, the magic of a wizard, uh, feels like a science, it behaves like a science, and yet quite often the world doesn't treat it like a science. And I wanted that idea of what is a world look like where magic is the sort of foundation of society. In addition to introducing Eberron to 5th edition, it also delves a little more deeply into the impact that the last war had on the setting, rising from the last war. There's a much deeper look at the Mornland, the nation that was destroyed by uh, the sort of magic cataclysm at the end of the war. One of my favorite things is we've added a twist to the dwarven culture, the Moorholds, and basically added in that they are caught in the middle of a terrible war with the cults of the dragon below and uh, the Dalkir. And this means that you have dwarves who are using symbionts, living weapons and armor. And it adds just this intriguing twist that makes them again very different from the dwarves of other settings. So we've taken some things like that and said, how do we make this more adventure friendly and more sort of ready for you to use as opposed to just deep secrets that people aren't supposed to know. One of the things I think that longtime fans of the setting will also really enjoy is that the book actually includes sort of playable character uh, elements for goblins and orcs, uh, where we've always within Eberron, the idea has been that the goblins and orcs have their own civilizations, have a place in history that is quite different um, from their role in many other settings, uh, but it's never really been sort of an easy way to encourage people to play them. And uh, the book includes uh, race options for both of those. And I think people will enjoy that. Rising from the Last War does touch on the plains of Eberron because Eberron has its own unique cosmology. That's still a topic I really hope we get to dig even deeper into in the future because it is very different from the traditional uh, sort of imagery of the Great Wheel. And I'd love to really get into what makes the plains of Eberron unique sometime when we have more time and space, literally little element thrown in and rising from the last war is what are called group patrons. And the idea of a group patron is that your group can either at the start of the campaign or during a campaign uh, sort of decide that, well, we are spies. We are tied to an adventurer's guild. And one of them is the idea that you could be journalists. Like we could start off saying we are an investigative team working with the Korenberg Chronicle. And that could be the drive for your adventure. I'm really excited that Rising from the Last War is going to be on Roll20. I love that people have the opportunity to play with their friends regardless of where they are. You know, the ability to bring people together even when they may be in different states, different countries. And I love the idea that in Eberron itself, if people had games that you'd be able to have, you know, a crystal ball or something like that at the table that let you, you know, tell your stories with your friends even when they're far away.